Hi, I'm Pastor Deb, and it's November 10th. The elections are over. Some are pleased and some are not, and many are still anxious about what comes next. But we read in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. Those who follow Jesus know whose we are. Whether we are Republican or Democrat or Independent, we are called by God to justice and compassion. We are called by God to place our trust and allegiance in God above all else and to take care of each other and our neighbors. So be followers of Jesus. Breathe, pray, break down dividing walls, meet together in peace in the face of disagreements. And as we say, Lord, lead us in your loving way. Amen. This past week was All Saints Sunday, a time for us to remember those who have died in this past year. Lighting a candle, naming those who have died, helps us let them go, even as we know grief does not stay contained in a neat 12-month period. But we remember those we have loved who have gone before. Jan Carlson, Glenn Human, Ray Bowman, Pat Joramo, Greg Baker, William Cooper, Arlene Diamond, Helen Heron, and Carol Rudin.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Uh, please join me in singing responsibly uh, from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord, and who may stand in God's holy place? They shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of their salvation. gospel is from the book of John, the 11th chapter, verses 32 through 44. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then Jesus, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
The story of uh, Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead is found only in the Gospel of John. And as I said, it is always the text for All Saints Day. So this year, you know, inspired by the band, let's have a little fun. Let's, let's make a little game of this, a matchup. Saints versus sinners, okay? So there are some ground rules. We got to decide what is a saint. Well, some religious traditions say a saint is someone who obeys God's will. Can we go with that? Okay, so then a sinner is someone who does not obey God. Are we good with that? All right, play along. Anyway, play along. So not perfect, but so this is like a quiz show, right? You tell me whether each player I name is playing for the saints or playing for the sinners. And this is you, how you vote. Saints, sinners, right? You got your, okay, here we go. We're going to start with Martha. Martha is the first to say, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yet Martha also says that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. So which side is Martha on? Is Martha a saint or a sinner? I see saints. Saints, I got a lot of saints, no sinners. Oh, I got some. Ah, oh, yeah. Look at those uh, on the fence voters, undecided. Yeah, we know about you. <laughs> okay, all right, hold that one. How about Mary? Mary is kneeling at Jesus' feet, and she also says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mary is heartbroken. She's grieving, and she's asking why. And again, it's impossible to ignore the accusation in that line, isn't it? Where were you, Jesus? You dropped the ball, and now my brother is dead. Is Mary a saint or a sinner? Oh, it's a little harder. Okay. Mm. Lazarus. The guy who all the drama and all the emotion are about. The raising of Lazarus is the final and the greatest of the signs that Jesus performs in the Gospel of John. Lazarus is the one that death has taken but cannot hold on to. So surely, Lazarus is a saint if he's real. The Bible says he's starting to smell, which is to say he was truly alive and is now truly dead. But he doesn't appear with Mary and Martha anywhere else, not in Matthew or Mark or Luke. So is Lazarus a saint or a sinner or a symbol? Oh, how are you voting? Mwah. Yeah, I see so. <laughs> Who is Lazarus, right? The man whose name literally means God has helped. Hold on to that one. And what, what about Jesus? Where, where do we put Jesus? He is so human. <laughs> He's greatly disturbed. It says it twice. He groans as though he sees in this death all the pain and all the misery and the parting that are not part of God's plan, but seem always to be a part of human affairs. He cries. Is there crying in football? Nowhere else in Jesus' whole ministry is he this human so fully human and, and so fully divine. He talks to God as, is there, as though there's no separation whatsoever between them. Father, I knew you always hear me. And he says to Martha, did I not tell you, if you believed, you would see the glory of God. And along with Martha and Mary, we do. Lazarus, come out. What about 
all the rest on the field, the ones who are not named. And I love how artists capture this scene, right? The witnesses are amazed and frightened. Some are on their knees worshipful. Some seem overwhelmed with the whole event. And the one on the far, on the far right there, that one seems overwhelmed with the smell a little bit. <laughs> they capture all the nuance, all the things that are going on, right? And the text, the story goes on to tell us that some do believe and some don't. And some run to tell the authorities what Jesus has done. And that starts the motion of Jesus' own trial and death. He is too powerful. He is a threat to the status quo. Whose side is Jesus on? Time out. Time out. Should there be a flag on the play here? Something's wrong, right? Something's wrong. Something, somebody is off sides. In fact, everyone is off sides. I don't know. Are there sides? Are there sides? God, now what is this game? I think you got the wrong rule book. How can we keep score? If everybody is a saint and a sinner simultaneously. Game is up. There is no winning this way. And some of those with Jesus saw that. They knew that. In John's gospel, that rule is also backwards. It is not that seeing is believing. It is that believing is seeing. Those who believe can see God. Those who believe can hear God when Jesus calls Lazarus, come out. Come out. The word he says is ecclesia. Ecclesia. Do you know that word? It's the same word we use for church. Ecclesial. Ecclesia. And as the church, we are the called out ones. We are called out from the world and called to God. We are called to let go of sorrow and hurt and anger, fear, anxiety, regret, despair, all those things that are killing us, that are eating us alive, that have us bound. <laughs> Scholars tell us that this story foreshadows the death and resurrection of Jesus. And I wonder if it doesn't also illustrate our own living death when we get bound up in all those things I mentioned, when we are bound by the way we live. When Jesus leaves the tomb, the grave clothes are still there. They're left behind. Death, which they symbolize, is discarded. When Lazarus comes out of the tomb, he's still wrapped in death's, death's trappings. And Jesus tells those with him, the ones who believe, the ones who can see, to unbind him and let him go. He doesn't do it. He asks the community to do it. And it's an invitation for us to be drawn into God's life-giving work. Our work as followers of Jesus is not to deny death. It's to defy it. It's to say death does not get to have the last word. To say that resurrection is not simply about something that's going to happen then. It's about what happens now. Now. Now we find the courage to live. Now we find the courage to help unbind others from pain and tears and in our wondering why. And now we become Lazarus 
the one whom God has helped. The ones whom God has helped. The ones whom Jesus calls out of death and into life. And so we pray, unbind us, God, to see you, especially when times are dark. Unbind us, God, to let go of whatever is killing us. Unbind us, God, and help us unbind each other for newness and fullness of life in you, creator and sustainer and giver of joy and all life. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O God of resurrection, you call us by name and raise us to life. Rouse your church from slumber, where we have held back in fear or shame, unbind us. Embolden us in our proclamation of your good news. Merciful God, unbind us. O God of creation, you have founded your word on rivers and seas, preserve fresh water sources and the creatures who call them home, heal places of pollution and nourish places of drought. Merciful God, unbind us. O God of the earth, you reign over all nations and peoples. Inspire us with wisdom and discernment as we elect legislatures and leaders. May they govern with justice and uphold the dignity of all people. Merciful God, unbind us. O God of heaven, you reside among us. Come alongside those who weep this day. Befriend all who are lonely, encourage those in despair, and heal any who are suffering, especially Andrea Taylor, Jerry Soli, Ralph Quass, Brian Bannon, Rick Olson, Gary Richardson, Becky Allen, Lowell Knudsen, Earl Torgerson, 
Heather Callen, and our youngest ones, Kayla, Holly, and Tyler James. Abide with your faithful ones in love. Merciful God, unbind us. O oh God, Alpha and Omega, we give thanks for your faithful ones who are now at peace with you. With all your saints, we praise you, for you have swallowed up death forever. Merciful God, unbind us. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please join me in praying the words our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you. It is so good to worship with you in this space. I'll refer you to our website to find out more about the things I'm about to tell you. And if I can bring home Holy Communion to your house, please give me a call. And now for some news, next Sunday is a Future of Hope Sunday, and we are gathering together all those plans for giving that we sent out. If you'd like to give, you can find a way to do that online. We're also blessing the quilts, the work of a year from our quilters, before we send those to people who need a little warmth and comfort. Again, on that evening at 4.30, you can come for family and friends giving as Family and Friends Gathering celebrates. November 24th is our Advent Fair, and we hope you'll join us after worship for so much fun. And there is also a ribbon cutting on our brand new playground, Come Slide. You can also see that there are new lights in the parking lot in these dark times, and there are parking improvements as well. So much going on outside at our Savior's. Meanwhile, inside, a weary world rejoices. That is the name of our Advent worship. 6.15 for soup, 7 o'clock for a quiet worship of peace and hope. The holiday food drive continues. We have raised enough to feed 100 families for a week. We're not done. If you want to give to that, you can do it in here in the comments or online as well. Mm -hmm. 